2 and 1. Hi, and welcome back to the second video where we chat a bit about psychological flexibility. So I've got the diagram called the matrix on the board. And um, it turns out that what we call psychological flexibility is actually a construct that will be made up of several different processes, and we'll be covering that in this video. Now, the empirical work behind psychological flexibility came out of research that was done by Dr. Stephen Hayes and also by Dr. Dermot Barnes-Holmes. Now, these two gentlemen, Dr. Hayes in the U.S. and Barnes-Holmes in Ireland, have gotten the ball rolling and have been involved in ongoing study of how language, cognition, and meaning making develop and evolve in us humans. Now they have been followed by other scientists and practitioners who have compiled studies that apply psychological flexibility to everyday living, learning, and creative problem solving. Now the work behind psychological flexibility has its foundations in a branch of modern philosophy of science known as functional contextualism, and we're just going to call it FC over here. And functional contextualism looks at the whole person and whatever context or situation they find themselves in in the world, and here's the world out here, at any given point. Now, right now, the context that I'm in is that I'm sitting at home at my desk. It's a warm afternoon outside, and I'm speaking into a microphone attached to my laptop. Now, my internal context on the inside is that I'm feeling full from just finishing lunch. I'm also thinking that you are somewhere listening and watching from a particular point of view while having internal thoughts, feelings, and sensations of your own. To add to this, we are both doing this for some purpose. My purpose is to share knowledge and show a point of view that is very flexible and useful for many different situations and experiences. Now, back to Dr. Hayes and Barnes Holmes and their colleagues. From their research, a behaviorally based theory of language and cognition was formulated called relational frame theory, and we're just going to hyphen that, straighten that up into RFT. It sets out to account for how information from our five senses experiencing travels down inside of us and is transformed into mental experiencing. Their work has taken up by many professionals in cognitive and social science research and has evolved into a branch of study known as contextual behavioral science, otherwise known here as CBS, not the uh, TV stuff. The stated goal of contextual behavioral science is to influence individuals and groups toward more effective functioning with what they call precision, scope, and depth. Now, a popular theory of CBS is something called Acceptance and Commitment Therapy and Training, otherwise known as ACT. Now, back in 2009, Dr. Kevin Polk and another psychologist, an ACT practitioner, developed this diagram, which he called a matrix, since it sounds kind of cool. Now, his innovation was to take the core processes of psychological flexibility and create a simple diagram to help individuals from kindergarten students to senior citizens get as much out of living and learning as possible. Now, in our earliest beginnings as infants, we seek to be fed, kept warm, and held as we learn to use our bodies and fend for ourselves. Now, along the way, the sounds and the utterances of our fellow humans, otherwise known as mom and dad, we'll put them up here, mom and dad. These sounds and utterances flow into us. They show up inside of us, and through lots of practice and trial and error, the wonderful world of language explodes within. So we get language outside which shows up as sounds here. And then on the inside, we have this language stuff showing up on the inside. Words and ideas become related to both external experiences, what's going on on the outside, and internal sensations. So out here, we might have mom, and there she is, 
and she's kind of smiling at us. And then before you know it, after lots of practice, we have this also mental picture of mom that shows up inside of us as well. And attached to that, we get words later on like warm and nice and comfortable. And we really start to kind of feel good when we have that stuff going on inside of us. Now in this way, language and experience up here become intertwined and we typically refer to this internal relating stuff down here as the mind. We get so good at this that we live as much in the world of thoughts and ideas and memories as we do in our world of sensing and acting. All of this cognition stuff in the mind is the language from the outside showing up on the inside. Thoughts are really me-to-me -me conversations. Now, when we are psychologically flexible, we are able to go back and forth using our experience to guide us. We also need to be able to look closely and further down the road at our actions and how they are working for us at any point in time. Psychological flexibility, then, is simply the ability to notice what we are doing in the world and also notice what is happening in and around us while we are engaged in moving toward personally meaningful experiences or away from unwanted internal experiences. So using language while holding it lightly helps you to get where you want to go and naturally increases this thing called psychological flexibility. Holding on to language tightly by paying too much attention to this stuff down here in our minds can get us stuck and lead to decreased psychological flexibility. Now noticing what you are doing and the function of your behavior is useful and helps you to make like course corrections when you veer off somewhere and it isn't working. So it's kind of like when you're sailing. So I'm going to draw a little sailboat here. Okay, got our sailboat. And the art of sailing involves something called tacting. And tacting is a term used to describe adjusting the sails on a sailboat to catch the wind, which works to move you along. Not usually in a straight line, but in a series of toward moves and also away moves toward and away. And in that way, you feel your way along and you chart your path. So the matrix diagram that Dr. Poe created contains the core processes of psychological flexibility, and it goes something like this. You can use the diagram to notice. Noticing is a basic process, and it's simply kind of being in the present moment. So we're just going to put that up there. That's one of the processes is being in the present moment in the here and now, noticing. And what we're noticing is, first, who and what is important. Now, who and what are important to each of us are basically what we would call our values. And, or what we continuously strive toward in life. Now, you can also notice what shows up inside of you and starts to feel kind of stuck on the inside. And when we begin to notice it, the other core process we're working on is this idea of diffusion or diffusing off of the sticky stuff. Then, rather than get stuck, we can learn to come up here and accept that the sticky stuff is there. And the more we can accept this sticky stuff, the less it shows up in terms of us struggling with it. And when we do that, we can keep moving toward the who and what's important by involving ourselves in what we are going to call here and what ACT calls committed actions. I commit to doing this action to move in the direction of what's important to me. When we do that, it brings us closer to our goals. Now we can also notice how we are doing over time, over the course of our lives, which is a process of the mind down here looking back on itself and noticing where we have been and where we would like to go. And we're going to call that, what ACT calls that, is self as context. Me looking at the context of my life over time. Now, when we notice in the middle here, we can begin to sort experiences onto this matrix diagram. Now, sorting is a very flexible thing to do, and it leads to making choices. So we're going to come up here. We're going to make choices that work to get you where you want to go. So that's a little bit about psychological flexibility, and I hope that you've enjoyed the video. 
and have fun with the diagram. Take care.